This morning, I'm going to offer an introduction to genealogy. I will use one particular system that I used in the construction of my family tree, and that's Family Tree Maker. And I will talk about, in that family tree, the options of what you can use. I'll cover that very briefly. I'll show you the results of someone having constructed an extensive family tree, mine. I'll talk a little bit about the sources that you or anyone else can use to construct that family tree. And I'll give you some examples of the products that become available when you have constructed a, a full family tree. And then at the end, I will offer you for your further investigation, if you're really interested in this subject, an article that I found. It's a 48 minute video put together by a very experienced researcher in genealogy, far more experienced than I, talking about all the other sources of genealogical information that are available and giving you the good, the bad, and the ugly of each. If you're seriously thinking about getting into this, you probably should watch that video first. So, let's begin. As I said, I constructed my family tree using the program Family Tree Maker. And I keep that program on my taskbar right down here. So, let's start Family Tree Maker. And there is the page for Henry Edward Drayton Jr. That's me. There is a page for every person, like, there's a page like this for every person uh, in <clears throat> my family tree. And in some cases, there's uh, more than one page for that person. Let me show you all the information that's on here. There's the name, the date born, where that person was born, the person that th this person is married to, when they were born and where, and when they were born, uh, excuse me, when they were married and where they were married. There's a lot more on here that is, to begin with, kind of hidden. For example, this person up here had two spouses in his lifetime. The one that's on here right now and a prior spouse. And if I change that and click, I get that other spouse, when they were born, where, when they died, where, when they were married, where, and their children, <clears throat> and when they were born, and their sex. Also up here, you can easily click over on the right on the parents of one of these people on this basic page. If you do, you get another full page showing the father and the mother and all the information of those people and their children. Going back to where I started, 
there is a lot more information that can be put on here. See where it says more? Look at the options if I click on that. There are facts, like uh, <clears throat> this person, me, changed his name from Henry E. Drayton III to Henry E. Drayton Jr. in 1936. He attended a school from 1946 to 1950. He was at Yale University from 1950 to 54. He was in the Navy, retiring as a captain from 1950 to 1985. Those are facts. Um, here are some notes. There's a note for you. If I start up here at the top, this note is the partial text of a transcription of a newspaper article inherited from the father of that person on that first page, dated 1912. And if you go on down here, that newspaper article in 1912 talked about all the Draytons from 1640-something or other until 1912. And you can put that in the notes. You can put other things in the notes. Or you can go back and then back again. Oops. And then back again, etc. Now, this particular family tree has a lot of people in it. Let me show you how many. If I click over here, it takes me to the list of all the people in this family tree. And they are rather numerous, starting with the A's. Lots of Draytons, as you can see. Lots and lots of Draytons and others, and others, and others, all the way down to the V's and W's. And if we don't want to lose this page that I'm on, I need to go back to <clears throat> Henry Edward Jr. and click OK. You can also create a scrapbook of photographs and uh, scanned items that you might find interesting and put that on the page of a particular person. So once you have created this uh, very complicated object in a computer program, what do you get out of it? Well, the most important thing, of course, is the actual family tree, which is right here. This is the all-in-one family tree of me. And it starts out in the 1600s, goes on down to the 1700s, has people in it that uh, came from that 1912 newspaper article. All those people and on down to uh, my father, no, excuse me, my grandfather. Nope, that was my great-grandfather. My grandfather, my uh, father here, and me here, and 
and my wife, wife, and wives, and children, and on and on and on and on, etc. It is quite an undertaking to do something like this. And mine was very easy. Why? Well, let's talk about sources. For most people, the sources are online. They are covered extensively in this 48 minute video that I suggest you watch if you're serious about this. But in general, they are places like Ancestry.com and places like the LDS Church uh, libraries, which have huge troves of uh, digitized data from census data going back for hundreds of years, from uh, immigration records, uh, all sorts of places where you can find basic data about where people were, where they were born, where they lived, how old they were, who their children were, etc. Individual information about individual people. I was very fortunate to have one 1912 newspaper which uh, was in two pages of fine print, gave me all sorts of information about my background. Most of you won't have that. It's a lot of work. I have talked about the products that you will get from successfully finishing a family tree, and I've shown you those results. I... Uh, I have down here, including the links hidden under here and, and the whole this whole link right here, not hidden, that 48 minute video that if you're really serious about getting into this, I suggest you watch more than once to absorb all the things that you will end up doing, learning how to do if you seriously embark on a career of studying your genealogy. If you have found this tutorial useful, first type the escape key to make sure that you are out of full screen viewing. Then look below the tutorial and click on the thumbs up button. If you want to receive notifications of new tutorials as soon as they are published on YouTube, click the subscribe button also below the tutorial. Hope you found it helpful.